I'm Eleanor White, and this is Sacred Geometry. This piece is titled Dying by Alex Gray. Alex Gray is an American artist um, in his 60s, and immediately when learning about sacred geometry, I thought of him because all of his artwork does have themes of sacred geometry. Um, so they really have an emphasis on multiple dimensions of reality and interweaving anatomy and psychic and spiritual energies. Um, he calls them visual meditations and there's a nature of life and consciousness. So he did write five books where he does talk about all of the transfigurations and the afterlife parts that, um, these paintings really have to do with. And his art is really well known in music festival jam band communities it's like what would be considered heady culture which is the emphasis of psychedelic drugs and the freed consciousness so this is a specific artist that's in the western culture that kind of takes from eastern culture by creating these art pieces he does believe in spirituality Another important use of sacred geometry is in the Hindu religion and really big in Hindu temples. This one is called the Brihadiswarar Temple in Thanjuavar, India, I believe. And it was created in the 11th century. It's made from granite and it's 66 meters tall. You can see how insane it is. These are all replications of squares and rectangles all leading up because in this religion, there's a very cool philosophy how replicating something to be smaller and smaller and smaller is how things exist in the cosmos spiritually. So by completing something on earth, the architects are really making something that is how they believe the cosmos to exist in a repetitive form and it makes things whole. Another piece that I would like to talk about is the Charlemagne's Aachen Cathedral in Aachen, Germany, which um, you can clearly see is a lot of repetition in the ceiling. It's a Christian church and it is believed that in Christian traditions, the number eight was used um, to show that Jesus would be resurrected and the number to represent the full cycle of God's plan, which is interesting because the number seven is a holy number because of its completion of creation and the Sabbath on the seventh day, which I learned reading about this, which I found very interesting because the proportions and all of the shapes are forming a, a religious context that by the repetition of the numbers seven and eight, you are closer to God. And lastly, I wanted to talk about one that, of course, we all know, The Virturian Man by Leonardo da Vinci, because the entire idea of sacred geometry supposedly originated in Greece, and that's where the golden ratio was created. And what Leonardo da Vinci was trying to do with The Virturian Man was represent the perfect proportions of a human being, However, it's not the same as the golden ratio, but they do have the same ideals, how the golden ratio is an example of a pattern that exists naturally and is the considered perfect set of proportions that's found in nature, which is very interesting because this then goes into a more psychological conversation and idea of why um, human beings are attracted to perfect proportions and why we visually like to see things that are proportionate, and then how nature itself creates these perfect proportions. Come to realize in conclusion was that no matter what part of the world, what religion, what culture, there's always a use for sacred geometry, and it's sacred for a reason, and it can be considered sacred in many different ways. There's different numbers that make it sacred, there's different shapes where squares, circles, triangles, they all are part of this, and the equal proportion is considered what the ideal of perfection is. And then lastly, a lot of this did remind me of the spirographs that everybody had that used to draw as a kid. And I think it's really interesting how it's come into our everyday lives and that there's a lot of thought behind sacred geometry and there's a lot of history behind it, yet it's very accessible and kids are able to use it now and understand the beauty and symmetry. But that's all I have for today. And thank you for listening. I hope you have a good night. Bye.